mind your potential and focus on your performance. Look into your future and power up your proper purpose. Power people, let's change our mindset, people. Let's empower our people to see all their potential. When they power up and they are official. Maximize your performance and focus on your potential. Look into your future and power up your proper purpose. Um, welcome to the Power Up Maximize Your Potential show where innovation meets transformation and you have one goal and that is to power up. <laughs> Absolutely. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Cheryl. And I'm Eric. And we are excited to be here today on Mspire Magazine, Dreamspire TV, where we have these incredible guests that we bring to you every week that they share the, what they're doing in the business world, how they are helping to literally power up businesses. And so we are really excited about our guest today because Eric, guess who we have? Who do we have today? See, I knew you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we have Josh Tapp. Josh is an entrepreneur. He is a podcast host. He's an investor, founder and CEO of the Lucky Titan. So we have an opportunity to chat with him today about how he is helping others to scale their businesses through masterminds and through joint venture, venture collaborations. So guys, stay tuned. You don't wanna miss this and we will be right back after this message. Power Up Show, where I'm your guest, I'm your host. I'm not your guest. I'm your host, <laughs> I'm your host Cheryl and Eric. And be sure to like us on Facebook. We have uh, Power Up, Maximize Your Potential. We do a tip of the month where you can actually find out what it is that we're sharing with our clients as well as with other businesses. You can follow us on Facebook and on all of the social media that we'll get to because we want to talk to Josh. So I'm going to read Josh's bio. Josh is the host of Apple iTunes, and it's a top 50 marketing and enterprise entrepreneur podcast, The Lucky Titan. Josh has worked with some of the world's top entrepreneurs, discovering their top business strategies, secrets, and sharing them with his fans. And he has helped more than 500, more than 500 entrepreneurs to build a successful platform to attract their ideal client, and to scale seven figures and beyond. And he lives on the beautiful lakes in Idaho with his lovely wife, Mackenzie. So we are excited to have Josh with us here today. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Super excited to be here, guys. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited to, uh, to chat with both of you. Welcome. Good to have you with us. <laughs> well, we are excited to have you. Now, because you are in the beautiful lakes of Idaho, we have to first, you have to tell us because this is winter time and it's got to be gorgeous to be able to look out on the lake, even though you have on a parka. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a parka and a, and a fur hat is what it comes down to, I think. <laughs> Feels like Canada up here sometimes. There you go. So, Josh, <laughs> before we, um, let's go ahead and get started. Tell us about the Lucky Titan. This is your company that you formed, you started. So what birthed this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, if we went clear back to the beginning, I was your atypical entrepreneurial child, like mowing lawns, trying to sell stuff on the side of the street and, and, and learning that entrepreneurship was one of my absolute, honestly, like favorite things that I could do. And, and one of the one of the benefits that came from that is that as we as I grew up and kind of grew up in an entrepreneurial family, I realized that that was the route that I wanted to go, but I still wanted to get my college education. 
So while I was in college, I actually ended up starting a marketing agency and that Facebook ads agency actually became um, mildly successful enough to the point that I was able to quit my job. Uh, and, and when I graduated school, I was able to quit my job and kind of move forward with my life. But after I had done uh, that, that business, I was finding that the number one problem that entrepreneurs have, and, and me especially, was keeping the clients in the door. Because you're constantly like either getting clients or you're you know, fulfilling on, on the, the service that you're providing for those people. And so that's when the podcasting world came to, to my life, I guess. I kind of immersed myself in the world and, and realized that I could get way more clients if I would just continually podcast and attract clients to our business. So the Lucky Titan was really birthed from that concept. You know, that's such a great story because, I mean, you started it in college and, you know, look what happens when you have an idea that you continue to follow through with. Right. 100%. <laughs> you know, if I, if I could just add something in here too, I think that also speaks to, you know, how you grew up as well, because if, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. I mean, when I went to college, I wasn't even thinking about entrepreneurship, but I wish I had. I didn't take it on until like later on in my life, you know, and the fact that you were able to do that at such an early age, it really positioned you to where you are today. So um, who do we think for that? Is that your parents that we should be thinking? I that was my dad because so my, my, my dad um, owned a construction company and during the summers we would have to go out and do construction. And if you know anything about me, I hate, hate, hate using hammers. I <laughs> And I am deathly afraid of ladders because I fell two stories off of the ladder once. And, um, but so I grew up doing construction, absolutely hate it. I'm grateful for people who like doing that because I will never do it again. So, but the other thing my dad did while we were growing up was he would either pay us to come and do the hard labor, but he would also pay us if we would read like a leadership or a business book and then give him a, a quick synopsis of it. He would pay us to do it. So I was like, well, I could make more money just reading the books. So I would pound through books as fast as possible. And that really instilled in me the, the value of you know working smart and hard and realizing that if I could focus my efforts on, on educating myself and learning to love learning, I'd be able to, I mean, the, the money would grow um, as, as I grew personally. And so I definitely have my, my dad to thank for that. And my mom as well, she's very supportive. Um, and my wife, obviously, now <laughs> it's an entrepreneur, and, and she's been um, she's been a major blessing for that reason. You know, that, I think that's one of the other important aspects is to have that support team, right? To have that support system. You know, I think as entrepreneurs, sometimes we travel this road alone. You know, and what you're all about is collaboration, one hundred percent joint ventures. And so we're going to talk about that. But I also want to talk about recently, I found that on LinkedIn, you have been able to reach that milestone of not only at one point it was 10,000 connections, but now you're at almost 1,400. And you have a three, three, three steps that can actually allow a person to achieve that level of success. Can you kind of run through that for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things I have to caveat when I when I talk about this is I am not a believer in influencers. Um, we worked with with people in our company who they'll literally have a million people following them on Instagram, and we go to sell something and they can't make a single sale. And so there's a there's a big difference between getting those raving fans and the people who are your your followers or your fans. We have um, so on LinkedIn, like you mentioned, we have the fourteen thousand right now, or almost fourteen thousand. And I would consider those kind of the vanity metrics, right? There's a lot of people following us, but we actually have a private community of around a thousand people who those are the people who actively buy from us. They're, they'll click on everything I send them. They're, they're consuming and consuming, consuming what we send to them. Um, whereas on LinkedIn, it's kind of more of a vanity metric. But this is what I recommend to everybody. If you're going to be, if you're trying to actually bring people into your world and instead of just to Instagram, or to to LinkedIn, for example, because on LinkedIn, I mean, we have um, you know we have people following us. They'll see our content. But if you truly want people to to buy from you and to have their lives changed, you have to be willing to take them to your own world, to your own platform. So what I always recommend to everybody is you go to the the oldie but goldie. You get them onto an email list. 
if they're on an email list, you can bring them into your world. But what we decided to do was to, um, to focus on growing our LinkedIn in order to kind of push people to a private community we have called the Tribe of Titans. And that community is where we, they actually get fully and more immersed into our world. We, we email them, um, we send them uh, access to our podcast, we give them free summits, we bring in uh, mastermind speakers, we sell them products, and we give them everything that we can to help them to win and to, to really monetize their podcast is why people go to that, to that platform. But you know, you're asking about the three-step platform or the three steps to really growing your platform, and this is what I would recommend. The very first thing is automation. A lot of people are, there's kind of like an argument online right now where people are either very for automation or they're very against automation. And I lie right in the middle because the problem that I see with automation is there's a lot of people who, I mean, we all know these people, especially on LinkedIn, where they connect to you and the, the, you know, a second later, you get a message from them saying, hey, this is what I do. You want to buy my stuff? Or, hey, here's a free value add for you. And you know what it is. You're being sold right. every time, right? Right. I personally don't mind being sold because I like kind of uh, tapping into other people's sales experience. But um, that's really, it's a turnoff to most, most people. And so there's, you know, there's kind of that level of automating the connection and connecting with the right people that you can have um, systems in place to, to connect with the right people. So we use a software that... Um, I don't even know if it's available to the general public. I'll be completely honest with you, but there's places like Meet Leonard, um, or I think it's like Meet Edgar now. They just changed the title of it. But anyways, where you can connect with people who are really the people that you want to actually connect with and have following your content. So what we initially did, and this was a year ago, I believe, we set an automation in place. So every single week we'd be connecting with 150 new people who are really our ideal clients. So for us, that's typically like a coach, consultant, um, entrepreneur of some sort who already has written a book or they have a podcast. They have some sort of platform they're trying to build. So we put all those parameters in place and it connects with 150 people a week. Now, if you don't want to do the automation, that step can be done by yourself. I mean, you could literally spend 15 minutes, maybe, you know, 20 minutes every month and you'll be able to actually connect with 150 people if you know who you're looking for. So as a as a part to that step, I would highly recommend to everybody that you um, invest, if you're trying to grow LinkedIn, invest in LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's the number one software, in my opinion, for finding high quality leads. We use that to generate sales appointments for ourselves, use it to grow our audience. Um, we use it to promote our content. So there's, I would recommend it. It's like 80 bucks a month, I believe, to, to be a part of Sales Navigator. Anyways, that's a caveat. But that's step one, right? You wanna automate the connection. The second step is to identify what the, the needs are of these people. So what I recommend to most people is to say, hey, instead of um, just guessing what products and services you should bring to the market, you should actually sit down with people and ask them what they need. The, the first thing that I did is I actually interviewed 250 people. I brought them on, I spent an hour with each person and it was over the course of like six months. And I just started asking them what their needs were. And, and it was as, bl as blunt as that was, you know, you're a podcaster. What do you really need? How can I help you? Right. And from that, we got clients, we got all, all sorts of different product options. We figured out what content worked well, and that allowed us to really strategize how we wanted to reach out to these people and the desires that they had and the fears that they were, and the things they were trying to run away from. So that was step number two was figuring out what they wanted. And then the third step is literally just give it to them. If you'll give them exactly what they want, they will pay you every single day. I and mean, you'll see, we've had many days where we'll wake up the next morning. I didn't even realize we had a product that was being promoted, but somebody would promote it and we'll wake up one morning with $10,000 in our bank account. It's like, whoa, what happened there? <laughs> um, that's, that's why I recommend people doing it that way because your followers will, will grow, but then you'll be able to identify what they need and then you give it to them. And really what it comes down to on that third and final step is you have to, to be creative about the way you do things, but try to recreate something that's already been done. So many people are out there trying to recreate the wheel. Um, but what we noticed early on in the podcasting space, I loved working with podcasters. I realized everybody was looking for guests or to be featured as a guest on a podcast. And there's a lot of options out there. I mean, you have matchmaker.fm, you have podmatch, you have, I think it's called 
podcast.io or something. I can't remember, but there's like tons of different options out there. And most of them are paid. I mean, you have to pay to use that. Mm -hmm. So we were like, well, why don't we just build a simple option for people that's free? So we just built a little social platform on Mighty Network. So it cost us like $100 a month, I think, to build this platform. But we got people to come over there so quickly. We filled it up to 500 people in four days by just reaching out to my connections and saying, hey, we're doing this. If you want in, hop on over here. And th there were some big name people coming over because it was it was a need that they had. And from there, we could upsell them into other products. So that's my long spiel for you guys. I'll hand it back to you. <laughs> no, that that I thought that was extremely helpful, very informative. And I think that the thing that really resonates with me and I think a lot of our viewers the most is you demonstrated the good balance between automation but having relationships as well. The time that you, the months that you took to invest in having those relationships with people to figure out what they needed and what they wanted, I think that enabled you to put that process in place and help you scale your business through automation. And I think sometimes, you know, when you're talking to entrepreneurs, you're talking to people, they think that those kind of automated blasts, just reaching out to people, at hundreds of people at a time, you know, they think that playing the numbers game will really help, you know, get them the business. But it's really about relationships. And this is something that Cheryl and I talk about just about all the time. I mean, it's really all about relationships, right? 100%. Well, and, and I love that you highlight that point because now in our company, I mean, so we sell very high ticket packages for our done for you services. And we sold a six figure package because I took the time to sit down with somebody and they connected me to somebody else, which was not even expected. And that person came to me saying, I will pay you whatever you want help me solve this problem. And it was a six figure package. And I mean, so many people are like, oh, I, I could blast 10,000 people in two weeks. And you're like, yeah, but, but why? If you only have 40% of those people coming back to your world, what's the point, right? You're, bur you're churning and burning is what I like to call it. And you're, you're kind of ruining, um, you're, you're kind of ruining your reputation in my opinion. You can automate those conversations to say, hey, let's, let's connect, right? That's all you need to say. So let's connect. Once you're connected, you have to take the time. I mean, for us, every single day, Monday through Friday, I don't ever work weekends, but Monday through Friday, I will always take one appointment from anybody. I don't care where they're at in business or if they're even in business, because it allows me to keep my pulse on the market, mm -hmm. or to keep the pulse on the market, but also to really figure out the needs of what, what they're doing. And it also allows me to make friends. Those people are the ones who end up buying from you long term. Absolutely. You know, this is a great commercial. We're going to go to, this is a great conversation. We're going to go to a commercial break and then we're going to come back and we're going to hear more from Mr. Josh. And this is just incredible information. So we're excited to be able to have you here. And so stay tuned and join us momentarily. Welcome back. We've been talking to Josh Tapp, entrepreneur, podcast host, investor, founder, CEO of the Lucky Titans. And we've been talking a lot about how to build relationships and scale your business um, and really leveraging the platforms that, that he was just mentioning through automation. Um, I have a question. I think it might be a little separate than what we talked about before the break um, about the Pantheon methodology. What is that about? Yeah, so the Pantheon is kind of that next step. Um, we found that, you know, we, we've been talking about how to attract an audience of people, but I mean, we, we all, I mean, everybody pretty much knows this for every email on your list, you should be making $1 per month. doesn't mean every single person's buying from you, but that holds true for most people. But the problem that a lot of people have is they build this following and they just assume that money is going to come. And what we recommend, and this is kind of where the Pantheon comes from is it's gathering those titans in your in your industry or in your audience and helping and, and providing them a, a paid solution 
So what we have, our Pantheon is actually a place for you to create a cash machine with your podcast. So if you have a podcast, we teach you how to take it, to monetize it in multiple different ways. And actually none of them are sponsorship, believe it or not. Um, but we teach them how to monetize it and create a seven figure business using, um, using different, uh, different monetization strategies for your podcast and leveraging the content. And so the, the Pantheon concept for everybody though, if you join the Pantheon, we talk about this is you should be building your own Pantheon, building your own group of people who are, um, your, what we call those hyper qualified buyers. I like to use the example of this because, um, if, if you're familiar with click funnels, which Pretty much everybody in the world is now. <laughs> um, ClickFunnels bootstrapped their company, no VC funding as a SaaS company, and they grew to, I think they're up to $350, $400 million now um, in annual revenue. And you don't do that unless you know what you're doing. <laughs> so I was talking to a guy um, the other day who was with them through the, the early launch, like when they were first starting out. And the way that they grew their business isn't because the software's anything spectacular. It's a great software, but it's not any, any better than Kajabi or their lead pages competitors, in my opinion. But they've got the, the thing that has differentiated them has been their community. And the way that they actually grew that so quickly was they actually built a mastermind community, a Pantheon community that um was was strictly for helping people to maximize their sales funnel and their marketing so they at the time i think they were charging 1200 dollars a month to be a part of this and they grew it to 200 members in just a few months but from that in order to be a part of that you had to be using the software and each person who was paying them are kind of those evangelizers right they're the people who have their own audiences they're like this software is amazing and from that they they grew to i think forty thousand users their first year just by hyper activating that core group of 100 to 200 people. And we've seen that over and over and over again is, is when you have that core group of people paying you and you're doing it in a coaching fashion or um, you know, a mastermind setting, it allows you to actually talk with them and communicate like we've been talking about through this whole, um, this whole episode is that if you can communicate with them, you're going to actually be able to keep the pulse on the market and give them what they need. You know, this is this is uh, great information, and you talk about leadership skills. This is this is hugely about leadership and how you're actually using your time, your talent, and your resources. Yes, yeah, hundred percent. There's, you know, a, a lot of uh, people don't know this, but the very first company I ever, I didn't really start. I joined a network marketing company. It was like the first thing I ever did entrepreneurially um, once I graduated high school. And they just sold leadership information, but I got heavily involved in that space and I love it. But I realized one thing pretty early on is that leadership information is free. It's everywhere. It's really, really hard to sell unless you package it with something else or you create a better offering. And the one thing that I really learned from that company, you know, saw my success and left the company, but that the thing I learned mostly from that company was that your time is so valuable to make sure that you're not just giving it away for free, but you're always, always making yourself available to people who may not appear to be the winners. Um, you know, Joe Rogan, if you're familiar with him, I think he's the number one podcast in the world right now. Joe Rogan will go on any podcast. You could be brand new. Um, as well, or not, no, you can't be ready. You have to have at least a hundred episodes, but he'll go on anybody's, anybody's podcast. He'll take time to sit down with you. And the reason why is, is this, like we've been talking about this whole time, right? He's, he high, he believes highly in, in investing in people. And I, I think if you feel like you're, you don't have half an hour a day to sit down with somebody, you need to reevaluate your schedule. You need to, you, know, you need to outsource, you need to find other ways because for us, I mean, we do a half hour meeting every, or I'll do a half hour meeting every single day, but I can pretty much do it at almost any time of the day because I purposely keep my schedule open and we outsource all the, the time consuming tasks to other people. So, so Josh, so have you had to curb your, your efforts during, you know, this time of disruption? I mean, how has, you know, COVID impacted, you know, the way you reach out to people and, and your business in general, you know, has it been an impact at all? <laughs> um, it's a great question, Eric. Honestly, uh, for us, it's been 
uh, better. <laughs> it's been significantly Great. better. People are now trained um, oh. on, on Zoom who typically weren't trained on that, right? Like, they understand how video conferencing works. Um, and that was how we were growing our business was completely virtually. And, you know, I, I'm under the Gary Vaynerchuk persuasion when it comes to the COVID-19 crisis, you know, the, the, it's the perfect time to start a business and to grow a business because all your competition is quite there. They're moaning and complaining about it right. and they're quitting. And right. so there's so many people who have needs still, there's still demand for the product, but there's not enough supply. So if you hop in right now, it's a great, great time to start a business let alone all the, I mean, not that I highly recommend this or anything, but there's all these government funding options for you, you know, to be able to, you know, low, the low end record, low interest rates to be able to start a business with virtually no risk. Right. Right. That's great. And and what about the clientele? I mean, so I imagine that's picked up as well during this whole environment as well. huh? Yeah. 100%. I mean, we found for us, what's been really, interesting for our business is you know one of our services is we actually build the podcast for them we host it we uh, sell their their high ticket services through the podcast and it's it's a very high ticket service for that reason but we were typically selling to people you know, entrepreneurs in the one to five million dollar category but this year just because of the the nature of it everybody else is quitting we decided hey let's just let's just reach for the stars let's see how many big companies we can reach for and so we're working with companies that are really, that are literally valued at a billion dollars. And we're able to come in and get time with the CEOs of these companies. You couldn't get that before. It's right. they're so available because they're sitting here trying to figure out what to do. And they have a lot of extra money sitting there saying, okay, you know, they're twiddling their thumbs. And what right. people don't realize <laughs> is these, these massive companies, even though some of them are scrambling, the ones who are, you know, kind of more established companies, they, their expenses have hugely decreased because they don't have to keep their buildings open, right? All their right. people remotely. They right. um, don't have to supply as much um, to their buildings in most cases. So there's huge uh, budget cuts happening to the facilities and those are be being given to the marketers, the finance department, the, the legal department. And all these people have these huge budgets now where they're trying to figure out what to do with the cash. And right now, this month, if this is airing in December, it's a perfect time for you to pitch your high ticket services to people because they need to meet the tax deadlines. A lot of them are saying, hey, if I can drop $100,000 on, um, on a project, that's an expense, right? It's right off for them. So it's a, it's a big, great time to, to be reaching out to big companies. <laughs> This is amazing. Um, you know, this has been some great information. When you talk about powering up, this is literally you know, what it's about. How do you get from where you are to where you want to be? And what are the resources that you have to your avail to be able to do that? So Josh, um, how do we get in touch with you? Yeah, I love that. Um, the number one place, I'm just going to give you one link. That's the easiest way. Just go to theluckytitan.com. Um, everything we have is linked through there. You can check out our podcast there. You can see uh, all of the freebies. I mean, if you're like, hey, I need to start a podcast now. I hope I've sold you on that. Start a podcast. <laughs> um, if you don't podcast, start a podcast, no matter what you're doing. Um, all of that is, is through luckytech.com. Awesome. And so, guys, there you have. You heard it from Mr. Josh Tapp that the Lucky Titan is how you connect with him. And listen, if you've got an idea, a thought, this is the best opportunity for you to take advantage of that and then to be able to connect with someone that has traveled the journey as I like to say, have actually gone, weathered the storms, the ups and the downs, and have put a system in place. And so thank you so much for sharing that information. Now, one more thing before you leave is that at Power Up, we have our Power Up cards, where you are all the way <laughs> in Idaho, and you are going to pick a card. Ooh. Pick a card, any card. There you go. I'm going, I want that one. That one, that's the yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. I love that. All right. So your question is, what have you witnessed that have strengthened your faith in humanity? Ooh, that is a great one. Because a lot of people feel like totally bummed out about life right now. Mm -hmm. But um, honestly, being with podcasters, they are the greatest people on the earth. I mean, we have Eric and Cheryl here, right? I mean, you two are, are prime examples of this. I mean, it's, I, I've been really 
strengthened to know that there's other people trying to make a difference. And a, a lot of people who, you know, if you're in, if you're not in this space in the digital space or the podcasting space, you might be feeling like, wow, there's no hope for humanity, but I'm telling you right now, get involved in the podcasting world and you'll realize that all the people here are trying to, to actually bless other people's lives, whether there's money involved or not. Thank you. That is the yeah. great way to end the show. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> Words well from said. God. <laughs> well, Josh Tapp, thank you so much for being with us here today. We truly value the information that you shared. And I know there are some viewers that are definitely going to connect and have taken the points of uh, wisdom because I've written down some things. And so they're going to be another one of your raving fans because they just want information and resources. And that's the best thing that we can do is provide that for individuals. So you, my friend, have an amazing day. You as well, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That, that was a great, another great interview. I mean, you know what I was thinking when, when he was talking about you know, um, his business and how he's done so well during COVID. I, I could just imagine our viewers saying, are you watching this? Are you hearing this? Like, there's much to, to benefit from. I mean, not, I'm not saying, you know, benefiting in front of a pandemic, but I mean, you know, where people are zigging, you can zag, mm -hmm. you know, and, and there's plenty of opportunity. And, and I thought, you know, when he mentioned that midway through the show, I just thought that I can just imagine our viewers just, just how much they're going to benefit, you know, from hearing those words of encouragement. Absolutely. You know, and I think now people are looking for opportunities. They're looking for options. They're looking for information that can literally say, OK, how do I change the game? Right. How do right. I how do I become a game changer and how can I do it? Especially if you're that solopreneur mm -hmm. that looking around like it's just me. Right. <laughs> Right, right. I'm the I'm the I'm the, the director, I'm the marketing person, I'm the sales person. You know, <laughs> what resources do I have? And something like Sales Navigator, you yeah. know, something that can literally help you to give you back the gift of time right. that you can use on something that is going to produce more value to you. So I, I think this was a great, great uh interview. And I'm glad that we're ending 2021 with mm -hmm. this interview. So this will air in December. So, Eric, where does the time go? Uh, I mean, that that time, I, I, I mean, we were just interviewing him. I mean, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, especially when, you, when you're getting that much good information from someone, um, you know, it, it really just makes the time just fly by. And, and I got a lot of good information out of it. I mean, because you're talking to people like us, you know, podcasters, you know what I mean? People who interview people, who build relationships with people. You know, we want to expand. I mean, it's just it's it's just great. It was it's great. It is. It's so much so that it it hates. I hate when we have to close the show out. But we gotta. We yeah, gotta go. I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> so guys, power up, maximize your potential. We are so glad that you were here with us today, and join us every Tuesday. Every Tuesday at six thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where you'll be able to share with the guests that we have on that are bringing just incredible information to you. Definitely follow us on our Facebook page at Power Up Maximize Your Potential on Facebook. We love to get comments and questions and we're there every day to make sure that we respond and answer because it's about relationships. So that's right. <laughs> definitely do that. And visit mspire.com and Dreamspire TV on YouTube. And definitely follow us on Instagram as well as Facebook. So with that, we'll see you later. Y'all have a great one. It's been another pleasure. Y'all take care. <laughs>